I thought this could be an interesting idea for a video. I wanted to talk about Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, you know, still currently a free agent, and so the way it typically goes is that uh, when I make a video for a free agent, right before I post a video, they end up signing with a team. So I'm sure he'll be on a new team by the time you're watching this. But regardless, uh, you know, it's interesting because obviously he's had such a in such a fascinating career up until this point. If you look at his pro football focus grades, you see that he's actually been pretty consistent over the course of his career. He's been one of the rare examples of a running back still aging well. You know, he's been in the league now for seven years, entering his eighth year. Usually, by that point, you're, you know, toast as a running back. But for Elliott, he still has been an effective player. Now, it's not to say he hasn't, you know, dipped at all. We definitely saw the best of his career, if you like PFF grades, his first four years in the NFL, and then kind of the past three years, has taken a step back, although still been an effective player. Um, definitely was kind of overpaid, but that contract was sort of set up that at some point it was going to age poorly. But I do feel like people kind of sometimes forget that, like, you can be overpaid and still be a good player. Like, those things aren't mutually exclusive. And I do think that he will be an effective player for whoever picks him up. So I wanted to watch some film and talk about what he can still do at this point in his career. Not so much playing center, but some other stuff. You know, what he can do and what he would bring to whichever team ends up signing him. So first, let's start off with this play. So what's going to happen here is it's going to be a uh, handoff. He's basically supposed to go up the middle. That's kind of where uh, he's supposed to go. In between the center and the left guard, that's where the Dallas Cowboys want him to be on this play. However, right when it begins, you see that there, you know, there was a Philadelphia player who was unblocked on the edge, who's now getting very close to Elliott simply due to the fact that there isn't really room up the middle. You know, the way this play was supposed to work was Elliott could shoot through a gap up the middle. That's why you leave the edge rusher unblocked is, you know, Elliott gets through before the edge rusher gets there and saves you a blocker. You can't block everybody. However, Philadelphia doing a good job of clocking up the middle and putting Elliott in trouble. So, what is Zeke going to do here to figure out a way to gain some yards? Well, nothing. He gets tackled. Uh, there was nothing he could do. I mean, what is he, you know, superhuman? Like, no, he's not going to be able to succeed in those situations. That's typically how that works, and that's how that worked for Ezekiel Elliott. So there were some situations like that that I saw last year where there was just, you kind of would every now and then be in a tough spot and not really be able to do too much. Again, like I said, you know, you look at the PFF grades, there isn't a massive drop off. There was a drop off, but not a massive drop off from when he was at his best. But I do think we saw some of the situations change as he's been in the league, which maybe makes the perception a little worse. Like, I still thought there were plays like this, because listen, at the end of the day, not every play is going to be perfectly blocked. There are going to be things that go wrong. Uh, I, you know, I want you to focus on 57 for Philadelphia. Watch what he's going to do here. Watch him hurry up, and he's going to get into this play relatively uh, quickly to the point where the offensive lineman in charge of blocking him wasn't quite able to get there in time. He's kind of there now, but it's a tough situation for Elliott. However, this time, Elliott does get out of that block and still ends up getting taken down for you know, only gaining a yard, but showed some flashes of being able to still do some things like that. He's not someone who's going down easy as he gets older. He still is able to you know, uh, fight through tackles and things of that nature. We also have stuff like this, where what's going to happen here is it's going to be uh, a handoff to the offense's right. That's the way this play is going to work. It's actually number 23 now for Philadelphia. He's the closest unblocked player on this play. And watch him aggressively run in. This is Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. He aggressively runs in and gets himself in position to make a tackle on Ezekiel Elliott. This is a really good defensive play to get himself to this point. However, Elliott sidesteps him, is able to still eventually get brought down because of that contact, but gets a lot more yards than I think your average running back would. So these are the kind of things Elliott was still able to do last year. Again, he is not an ineffective running back by any means. He is still an effective player who can make some plays happen. I didn't really talk about it too much in the film. Uh, I didn't really show like a play for it or, or anything, but uh, one thing that's also worth mentioning, very good pass blocker as well. Does the other stuff uh, as well, which is definitely something I value. So, you know, I mostly focus on what he does in the running game, but it's not just what he does in the running game. Anyways, let's head over to a play like this, because I also think one thing worth noting is, you know, we kind of will discredit some running backs sometimes and say, okay, sure, you can be effective when you're in a good situation, but, like, that's still valuable. And, in fact, you could argue that's just as valuable as being effective in a bad situation, is being able to maximize your good situations. And that's what Elliott, uh, you know, has made a career off of, basically, is in good situations, he doesn't just look good, he looks great. 
So this play begins. He starts running to the offense's right, which is towards the left side of the screen. And you see number 29 for Philadelphia reading this play right here. And it's, you know, he wasn't initially, you know, going over towards Elliott. He was initially just following uh, someone who was blocking in that side of the field. But he does now kind of see what's happening. However, Elliott breaks back towards the uh, right side of the screen. And now he's just completely out of the play. But okay, there still are a couple of Philadelphia players who are in position to make a tackle. But this is just where the speed of Elliott comes through. Watch him just power through, and he is going to get into the end zone for a touchdown. Really good stuff from Ezekiel Elliott to be able to pull that off. And again, yes, that was well blocked. That was a good block by the you know, Cowboys. The, really no, no notes on that one, I would say. But that's kind of the thing is there are going to be plays like that. Just like there's going to be plays where everything isn't perfect, there are going to be plays where things are perfect. And you want someone who can take advantage of that, and that's what Elliott can do. Also heading over to something like this, it's going to, going to be a run to the offense's left. That's the way this play is going to work. And so, uh, you know, Cooper Rush gives the ball to Elliott. And again, how many yards do you expect him to get on a play like this? Not a lot. However, Elliott is able to run through and he you know, powers through and still picks up a good chunk of yards. There are things that Elliott can do that are still very effective. He is, I would say, a good running back in the NFL. Now, again, do I want to pay him $10 million a year? No, I don't. Like, I, I agree with the decision by the Cowboys to, get, you know, cut him due to the fact that just, you know, paying running backs that kind of money almost always ends poorly it, that's just sort of how it works and it's what happened here as well uh but that doesn't necessarily mean that running backs are always you know bad as they get older that that's just not how that works you can still be an effective player and be overpaid as I believe Ezekiel Elliott was so what is my kind of final verdict on Ezekiel Elliott I actually think in some ways him no longer being on the Cowboys could be good for him. You can now kind of, he can be in a situation where people aren't going to say, well, yeah, you're great, but you know, the contract, blah, 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 blah. He can just go out and play football, be for, you know, play for a team that wants him there, all of that good stuff. And it should be something that I think should help, uh, you know, should help him. So uh, I, I definitely think he's still an effective player. And while, you know, he's, you know, maybe isn't quite as good as the name might suggest at this point, uh, still, hey, there's value in that. There's value in having a running back that people, you know, feel like is very good. And because of that, they're going to pay more attention to that running back. That There's definite value in that as well. So yeah, as a whole, uh, I think he's still an effective player. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on Ezekiel Elliott? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.